All right, so this is a uh, quick overview on a new concept that I'm playing around with for uh, music creation uh, using a MIDI sequencer uh, and uh, some in some cases you, you can use audio files, uh, but mostly in my case we're using MIDI sequencers uh, to generate uh, music from sampled sounds. Uh, so I played around with a few different options in the last few weeks and re, you know reevaluated some old options that I had uh, looked at for you know years in the past on and off again. And uh, I was looking for something that was going to be a very stable um, reproducible sort of setup for the purposes of uh, scoring to picture, uh, creating film score uh, in, in a MIDI sequencer, where I could uh, do a few things that are pretty standard to proprietary commercial setups like uh, Pro Tools, Cubase, uh, Logic, um, those kinds of, uh, you know, digital audio workstation scenarios, some cases in which you're syncing you know, two or more of those uh, platforms together to do various things. Uh, and I wanted to be able to do it uh, and, and get all of the features that you would have in those commercial uh, sorts of situations with open source, uh, free and open source software. So I have been using LMMS for a long time because I find that the uh, stability of the, the application is very strong. The MIDI sequencer uh, is very robust, and the ability for it to handle uh, various sorts of sampled sound uh, formats is is quite good as well. Uh, and especially if you're on on Windows, which I'm not, but if you were on Windows, you would be able to use certain VSTs uh, natively, uh, which I believe means you could play the Contact Contact Player uh, and use a variety of uh, commercial sound libraries if you wanted to. Uh, I don't do that. I use sound fonts, and, and we may discuss that in the future, why sound fonts are perfectly sufficient uh, for your needs, even in light of the, uh, the fact that there are very high-quality sound libraries out there. Uh, you can actually achieve similar, and if you're really if you're really clever, you can even get the same types of results with uh, sound fonts. And there are reasons why uh, that can be done. Uh, we'll again discuss that on another date. But for now, we're going to look just at the the sort of the 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 internals of the editing and export of music. So I have here a session opened up, which is actually using multiple programs. This is what I finally uh, resolved to. For many years, I have avoided using Jack, uh, the Jack Audio Server, uh, because of its. Uh, well, in a, in the past, it had some instability and in the complications of using Jack uh, with respect to your uh, computer sound card capabilities. Uh, Jack interrupts a lot of things, and you have to route and reroute and uh, pin various inputs and outputs in order to get it to function properly. And then you have the complication of saving those sessions. Uh, and then reproducing them. Uh, so I always shied away from Jack, and I was, you know, I've always been looking for a digital audio workstation option that was completely internal, uh, that you could open up one application, I could run video, I could uh, sync to video, uh, and I could uh, do my MIDI sequencing, and I could use plugins in a stable environment. Uh, both instrument plugins and effects plugins. Uh, and th as you know, that doesn't really exist. It's very, very difficult to run across one application in open source uh, that will do all of those things. Our door has long been um, advocated as the end to that, that our door would serve that, that uh, purpose and use. But uh, as I evaluated our door again just in the past couple of weeks, I found that it lacks some very, very basic function that is that, that renders it a non-starter for me. And that that is very simply that it doesn't do MIDI on off very well. I mean it doesn't it doesn't always consistently render MIDI notes on and MIDI notes off properly. And that's that really means that you can't use it. Um, at least not for what we're talking about here where we're doing full orchestral type scores. Now if you're doing loops and electronic music, you can deal with those idiosyncrasies and you know take a couple shots at it and then bounce out your your loops. Uh, 
uh, without too much frustration. But when you're working with a large MIDI project that has extensive MIDI regions, um, yeah, our door just can't can't possibly meet the needs of that kind of uh, uh, environment. So I took a look at our door. I really like the aesthetics of our door. I like how the development has been uh, going and and gearing up more towards the MIDI in our door, but it just doesn't work. It doesn't. It, it, it's not that it doesn't work for me. It just doesn't work. So uh, I'm still waiting on our door to catch up here to some other options. Now, another option I looked at, again, because Elma Mess does not do uh, video syncing, uh, at least not directly and not even indirectly via MIDI timecode transport. Uh, there is a hack that I have on my YouTube channel here that you can find about syncing video to LMMS, uh, but it, it's a hack. It doesn't really work right. Uh, likewise, if you're dealing in video, uh, rather scoring to picture, uh, LMMS does some strange things with its, um, its song editor the sequencer viewport, where the measures will expand and contract given the changes in tempo and meter on the fly. Now, that means that it will play correctly in the end, um, but when you're syncing to picture, using markers or creating markers, you know, in various ways does not work very well. You can't, you won't have markers that will stay in place on your timeline. Uh, in that kind of situation. Plus, it doesn't really sync to picture properly. So that brought me back to Q-Tractor, and I had messed around with Q-Tractor some time ago, and that's what we're looking at right now. Uh, and Q-Tractor has come a long way. Now, it just so happens that when I got back into this about a week and a half ago, uh, the latest uh, app image for Q-Tractor doesn't work, at least probably on most systems, none of the ones that I have. Uh, and there will be an update coming, I think, very shortly, uh, uh, Q-Tractor is updated quite frequently. There's really only one developer on it, on the project, but it's kind of a life's love labor that's going on there, and Q-Tractor's come a long way. Uh, it's the same individual that has done a lot of the other uh, uh, Linux-based music uh, kind of modules, like um, Q-Jack control to, to control the Q, uh, <laughs> Jack server, uh, and then also Q-Synth and some other things like that. So um, I took another look at this, and the the MIDI capability is very robust. The timeline capability is up to par with uh, commercial proprietary applications. It has a couple of really nice skins and themes that you can use. This one is the one I've settled on. It's a nice kind of medium dark theme. Uh, the icon set is a little lacks a little bit to be desired, but otherwise this looks an awful lot like uh, the aesthetics you would find in a commercially available uh, digital audio workstation. Uh, it does audio, un unlike LMMS. It will do cutting and splicing and moving and fading of audio fairly easily, whereas you have to do a lot of hacks and external editing in LMMS. Um, not that I do a lot of audio, but it's nice to be able to put an audio file in there uh, in a MIDI sequence to you know just drop a sample directly in and use it. Um, and it has automation as well. Now the big hang up with Q-Tractor that I found in recent weeks is that Q-Tractor has instability with its plugins. Um, it, it does not load plugins very well and from release to release that can change. It can be very reliable in one release with a certain kind of plugin and then in the next release it doesn't work very well with that particular plugin but it's improved for another one. So as is the case with um, you know open source software there's not a reliability over time. Uh, and the plugins do suffer that. However, the the rest of the program is quite stable in terms of the MIDI editing, the audio uh, editing, and the audio and MIDI export and import. Um, it I remember when dealing with Q-Tractor in the past that it had a lot of problems with uh, complexity in routing signals, um, but I found that uh, that has improved a little bit over time, and also with the way I'm going to be using it, it's really not much of an issue. Um, and that then that brings me back to LMMS. LMMS is out of I think all of the major uh, a, a digital audio workstation type you know applications for Linux. Uh, LMMS is probably the most stable one that the release candidates they put out, they start up, they run, the plugins work properly, uh, and the sessions 
save reliably and load up reliably. Um, and that's really why I like to use LMMS first and foremost, is that it's a really robust application and uh, as far as MIDI goes and the, the reliability of it is really second to none uh, in the field. Uh, now, that being said, I remembered an old uh, tutorial on MuseScore on the MuseScore website, which is a notation program, uh, an electronic notation, open source notation program, that discussed the possibility of exporting MIDI channels uh, to an external application to run uh, sound plugins, you know, instruments, uh, virtual instruments. And the tutorial dealt with LMMS because, again, LMMS has a very, very strong plugin system. Uh, with the plugins that it has. It doesn't use LV2, although with Carla you can, uh, and I enable Carla, and you'll see how powerful this really can be here in a moment, even considering that you could be using Carla inside of LMMS. And I remembered that, and I, and I remembered that you could even open multiple instances of LMMS to cover more than 16 MIDI channels, which is what you're limited to. Really, it's only 15 if you get rid of the percussion channel, I think, which is channel 10. Um, if you take that one out, you have 15 channels. So you can run out of those channels very quickly in a large orchestral score, but you can open multiple instances of LMMS, and you can uh, uh, map these MIDI outputs uh, through Jack. Now, again, I don't, I'm not a big fan of Jack, but it made me go back and take a look at it. And what I decided to do was try this application of LMMS as an instrument environment running off of Q Tractor as a MIDI environment. And what that gets me is it gets me a very strong platform for instruments and mixing because I can use LMMS's mixer, which is a very direct, well-put-together uh, mixer that has very simple to understand and very easy to implement routing as opposed to the routing in uh, a Q-Tractor, which is a little bit more complica complicated and convoluted. Um, it, I get that with LMMS, and then I get the benefits of the strengths in Q-Tractor's MIDI uh, editing system and the aesthetics of the sequencer. So I can, I can do automation of various controls directly on top of the MIDI track and uh, I can edit the MIDI very, very cleanly, much more like I would in a commercial grade application than I would in LMMS uh, in some respects. So I get the strengths of one from one application, the strengths of another from another application. And likewise, uh, QTractor uh, does work through Jack. It does not work apart from Jack. You must have Jack installed. Um, it allows me to do... Uh, true video transport in sync. So I can run XJDO, which is really what our door does, by the way. It just is that it's embedded in the program, uh, but it's running the same sort of uh, connection here uh, through the same software uh, plugin or the same software module, I should say, uh, this video player. I can do that uh, through Jack Control from uh, QTractor. And then what I'm doing is I'm using QTractor as my master. So it's, it's running everything else. Uh, also, I found that the automation of uh, connection to Jack is much better now than it used to be a number of years ago. That when you start QTractor and you start XJDO, and as long as you have it set in LMMS to use QTractor's um, uh, connection kit for audio and MIDI, uh, all you need to do is start the programs and you don't really need to open up QJack control and, and play around too much with the patch bay. Um, besides, QTractor has a patch bay already uh, in it. Uh, so you can see here that uh, QTractor's patch bay uh, will open up here. And you can do all the connections directly from QTractor. I also found that the connections save session to session. Um, which is really nice. And I do have to change a few of the audio output uh, uh, connections so I don't have some looping and redundancy, but that's not really a big deal with me. Uh, the MIDI connections, though, all save uh, very, very reliably uh, session to session from QTractor, which is a nice thing. So what I can do is I can make an, a, uh, a session in QTractor with my MIDI data. At the same time, I can be creating uh, my session in LMMS with my instrumentation and my mixing that mixes down to an output that comes back to QTractor uh, to bounce out. 
Uh, I can be doing this at the same time. I can save the sessions independently, but in the same folder. And then it's just a matter of opening Q Tractor and then opening LMMS later on, and everything is right where I left it. So this is really, really strong. Uh, and I want to demonstrate it to you here very quickly, and then I'll talk through again uh, what my desires were and how I got here and how this works, and give you a general overview. I'm going to follow this up in the future with some uh, additional tutorials where we will discuss more in depth, step by step, how to uh, complete this process and maybe some other related topics. So here is a quick demonstration with uh, Video Sync playing through LMMS's. Um, uh, audio plugins uh, through uh, LMMS mixing uh, and uh, uh, the plugins in the mixer back to uh, Q Tractor and then uh, to an output that can be recorded or bounced out um, at will. So, and all with video syncing. So, I'm syncing directly to picture here. So, uh, take a listen here, take a look, and then we'll we'll talk through uh, the various uh, parts of this. Okay, so that's the whole session, um, and uh, let me talk you through what's going on here. I, I gave you a very, very quick discussion, a very quick overview. Let's look specifically at what's happening here. So again, um, what I was looking for in my setup was reliable, reliably, reliable MIDI entry and playback. Um, I needed uh, instrument stability. I needed to be able to play samples, not just sound fonts, but also just wave samples. I needed a good sampler. A uh, Q-Tractor did not have a very good sampler. It has a sampler uh, that that uh, comes uh, not necessarily with it, but a plugin that's often associated with it, the V1 plugins. Uh, but it's not a it's not a basic simple sampler where you just drop a waveform in and then you can hear it. Uh, you have there's a lot of filters that are enabled and you have to disable a lot of things to make it work. So I wanted samples. I wanted to be able to do it without crashing the program. I wanted it to be reliable. I needed synthesizers. Uh, so I needed a, a complex synthesizer like the Zenad Sub Effects. I needed to be able to use a simple synthesizer if I just wanted a very basic waveform, be able to get there very quickly. Um, including, it would be nice to have a drawable wavetable synthesizer, which uh, LMMS has all of these things. Q Tractor has some of these things, and when you use some of them in Q Tractor, it crashes. Uh, so that that was the complication there. Uh, I needed to be able to have some simple mixing with very clear channel routing which again, LMMS does very, very well. Uh, not so much in Q Tractor. I needed um, uh, stable plugins as well in the mixing uh, channels, which Q Tractor has a few stable ones, but some of them crash the program. However, in LMMS, everything works uh, right out of the box. They're very well tested plugins, and uh, you can get there very easily without much frustration. Uh, I needed video playback sync um, so that when I started the, the playback on the session, I was syncing absolutely in place, and I wanted to be able to just turn it on without having to align anything. I just wanted it to work immediately after loading. Um, 
Uh, and I wanted uh, audio clip editing, some basic audio clip editing, which LMMS does not really do, uh, but QTractor does. You can uh, clip audio files and crossfade them and, of course, add uh, real-time effects in, in the mixer. Um, I wanted a clear timeline uh, in the playback. So let me get rid of this video here. A clear timeline in the playback that um, I could apply markers to if I wanted to, and it wouldn't shift. It would be proportional all the time. So proportional music measurement. So as time goes by, you can see that the measures are compressing and expanding when the tempo changes. Uh, LMMS does not do that, but QTractor does that very, very well. Um, I wanted pleasing aesthetics and themes, which I think I got here. And I wanted a, a direct setup and session retention. So I wanted to be able to save what I'm working on and be able to get back to it very quickly and efficiently. Um, so I think I got everything I wanted out of this. Let's take a look at what's going on here. First and foremost, I'm running through the Jack audio server. Uh, the one big thing I had with Jack that I never liked was that it uh, hijacks your computer every time you use it. So if you're using a Jackware application that starts Jack up in the back end, when you shut off that application, oftentimes in Linux environments, the Jack server, Jack Dbus or Jack Bus or Jack D does not turn off. And you end up having to open up uh, the task manager and kill that process uh, manually. Um, I, I always hated it for that. And then it occurred to me, you know, I could just put the script into uh, a a uh, you know a little a little launcher here. So what I did is I made a stop jack launch <laughs> that just runs the kill command for Jack Dbus, and uh, that's simple enough. So when I turn everything off, all I have to do is click that one time, and it automatically kills the process. So that that settled that for me. That's a small price to pay to get the kind of uh, interaction that we're going to be looking at here. So that got me back on board. Uh, and then I was able to look a little bit more seriously at Jack. So um, the nice thing about QTractor is, again, that it has the patch bay already in it. You don't have to open up QJack control uh, to do this. Uh, if I'm going to use QTractor as the master all the time, I won't need to use the Jack transport and QJack control to, to start and stop anything. I can just use this. If I'm just using LM, I'm only using LMMS as my plugin environment. I'm not using any other peripherals. So if you're using other peripherals that you need to sync, you might need to use a QJack control, but that's not what I'm doing. Um, what I did is I created a MIDI out, uh, a MIDI bus that, if I open up my, uh, my mixer here. I have a bus that I'm running all of my MIDI out through. So when I create, oh, excuse me, when I create a um, uh, an instrument, I select MIDI and then I put my bus output, my output to that bus. And then that bus is what I'm going to see in LMMS whenever I assign my channel. Now, I don't have any plugins assigned to these MIDI tracks. So what that does is it means that QTractor is operating on very low system resources. One big problem with QTractor is when you start loading instrument plugins in, uh, it really bogs it down and increases the likelihood of crashes, especially if you're using a lot of channels. So using QTractor only for its MIDI capability makes the program extremely stable. Uh, I haven't had it crash on me at all because I'm not doing any things that would cause it to crash. I'm only using its MIDI capability. And I can do this in real time. I can set my instruments uh, simultaneously in LMMS as I am in here. So it automatically assigns a channel. This would be MIDI channel 1 uh, for that instrument uh, down here. Uh, MIDI channel 9 in this case was added a little bit later. Uh, MIDI channel 2 and so on. Uh, and then what I did is I open up an instance of LMMS. And then as I add an instrument, I can go in here. And the nice thing is, is that this doesn't have a patch bay, but LMMS is aware of MIDI uh, input. So uh, you need to go to your settings and make sure that the uh, sound output is using the Jack Audio Connection Kit for audio out. And then the MIDI is using the ULSA sequencer. 
which is also used inside of the QJack control and inside of the patch bay and QTractor. So uh, it sees both of those things. So make sure that that's set. And then what I do is I add an instrument and then immediately from the MIDI input, I can see my QTractor bus as well as some other things that I was playing around here uh, with. But all of my MIDI data, including my automation, if I have it enabled to play back, will come through that bus and it will be aware of the track. So if I enable that bus, uh, I can then hear that sound coming through. If I look inside here, let me check this other one, see if the um, MIDI is enabled on it. If I look inside of here, all I need to do is make sure that my uh, channel is enabled to the right place. So this instrument is channel one. So channel one's output from Q Tractor uh, will automatically play through this instrument. Uh, and that's that's how we get there. So if we go back to Q Tractor, and uh, hopefully we didn't mess anything up in there, if we hit play, you'll see that all these MIDI commands are coming out of the bus, and then they're feeding into LMMS. Into those, into those inputs. Now this is a really interesting thing here. If you watch, this is the one f funny uh, little, uh, I think, artifact that we get out of doing this. If I hit stop, the notes hang even after hitting the panic and Q tractor. See, the sample ran out. The notes are hanging in LMMS. So I f there is no, there is no stop. You know, there's no uh, uh, stop command in LMMS because LMMS is stable enough to not really need that. It's all internal. Uh, so what you can do is I found you hit play and stop and then it will kill all the signals. So that's the one funny thing. If you're in the middle of a project, you'll get some hanging notes uh, when you hit stop. But you can see how everything routes. Not only that, but you can also route the um, uh, automation. So I have the sound automation uh, in LMMS is being controlled by uh, on channel one MIDI controller eight, which is the universal sound automation, uh, which is uh, out of one through whatever one twenty eight, it's eight. If you're going zero, it'd be it would be number seven. So Q Tractor refers to the automation for volume as seven, but in LMMS it's actually eight. So you have to know these these number these numbers and how they coincide. Now if I save my sessions in both of these, they automatically load up whenever I start it up each time, which is really, really nice. Um, so I'm able to automate my my volume, which you can see down here is controlling the volume on the on the MIDI output in this mixer. Uh, I can set that as well and, and, and uh, connect that automation to uh, LMMS and I can control by using these faders, if I want to, I can control the audio, uh, the volume in LMMS because it will be connected. So you just have to set it to play that back, uh, make sure that you're selecting that and that you can see that in the track uh, uh, here in the uh, sequencer. So everything automates beautifully uh, using MIDI. And then I could certainly, and I did test it out, but in theory open up a second instance of LMMS and put on a whole other array of instruments if I need to maximize my MIDI channels. If I max out the 16 MIDI channels that there are in MIDI, uh, I can go further uh, like I did, like, you know, like you, like you can in MuseScore as they show on their homepage there. Um, so that's the setup. That's how it works. Then what I do is from LMMS, I bring my uh, uh, mixing down here like I normally would in LMMS with all of my uh, plugins. All the plugins that you're hearing on that playback are not in Q Tractor. They're actually in LMMS. So I, I send my uh, mixing the proper routing the where I want it to go to the master. And then I can route my master out from LMMS. And this saves as well in the session. I can save that, or, or rather route that uh, to from LMMS to Q Tractor again. So what I'm doing is I'm routing into uh, this bus. So if I come back here, I'm routing back to this strings bus. I called it strings because that's how the uh, uh, composition started was just strings. But all of my all of my sound is coming from LMMS into this one bus, and then I route this down to another mix mix down, uh, which is mix out here, and I can add additional 
um, plugins if I want to, very limited so I don't crash the program. But I added a tape simulator to give me a little bit of a tape whir and then a limiter as well. So then this I can route uh, to my master inside of uh, a Q tractor and then I can bounce out my uh, my sound. So I can enable an output a track here to record and it will bring on the input of my mix and then I can bounce out my uh, uh, mix here. Uh, and then I save that, and that's my final output. Now, in addition to that, I did a little bit of mastering. Uh, you can do some mastering in uh, Audacity, which is probably a good thing to do no matter what you're doing, uh, to always master in a separate, app, a separate application uh, uh, on your final complete track. Uh, and then I also used a website uh, for mastering, which we'll talk about uh, on another tutorial as we get down the road and look at more specifics here. Uh, so that's it. That's my setup. That's the overview of what we're doing doing here. Again, the session saves uh, and works automatically. Uh, I'm very pleased with that after closing and opening sessions. I had a lot of trial and error to find out uh, what combination and what uh, 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 what order things should be closed and saved in, and we'll talk about that in the future. But as long as I'm saving everything to the, to the same folder, uh, everything is nice and tight right together. I just have to open up my sessions and they automatically connect, and I'm, I'm back to work every time. So uh, yeah, I'm really, really excited about this, uh, about this setup. It's been very reliable what I've been doing here, uh, just using the MIDI capabilities of QTractor and then relying on LMS for what it's so strong for, its instrument playback plugins and mixing. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very, very pleased with this. So I'm happy to share this with you. Uh, and I you know, encourage you to, to test out some of the jack capabilities if you have shied away from it like I have over the years, uh, I've been made a convert and a believer. I, I, I think that this is going to work for me uh, going forward, um, at least until something like our, our door becomes much, much more stable. Um, I find that this is a very, very, very strong setup here. And we're not hacking anything, which is nice. Everything is actually being used the way it's supposed to be. Um, there's nothing... There's no hacking going on here. Um, all of these programs are designed and made capable uh, with those MIDI functions to do exactly what we're doing. So we're well within the bounds of what the software was was developed for. And uh, very exciting. So I uh, wish you the best of luck with this. Um, and uh, Oh, likewise, just sorry, the XJDO, again, if you're on a Linux system, you can use this uh, nice video player. has some very simple tools. You open up a file. You can set the sync. In this case, you set it to jack, which is the default. So I don't even have to turn this on. All I have to do is load a file in. Uh, and then uh, if you want to, you can set the display to be uh, window on top. So it'll, it'll be on top no matter what screen you're going to. You can always see your video, uh, and you don't have to monkey around with bringing up windows and closing them down unless you want to get it out of the way. You can just minimize it. So, uh, yeah, very, very good, strong setup here. And I wish you the best of, this, uh, best of luck with this, and, and uh, happy mixing.